Hello everyone, it's Gregarious once again, here with another Bluey movie review. So, given AMC's birthday offers for free large drink and free large popcorn, and considering I haven't been to this particular Universal Cinema in ages, we might as well go and see this film in the full IMAX screen. Let's do it. I just got out of Black Panther in IMAX at Universal Cinema. Initial impression was I went into the film with, you know, neutral expectations. Like, it's an MCU movie and, you know, we got Chadwick Boseman passing away a couple years ago. So I was really wondering how they were going to do the film justice. And short version is, I'm glad I went to see it. So the first two minutes of this review are going to be spoiler free and then the following after two minutes is going to be full of spoilers. That has been the template moving forward. Maybe we'll see what happens. <laughs> so anyways, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is the follow-up to Black Panther from 2018 starring the late Chadwick Boseman as King T'Challa. Now, this movie obviously doesn't have King T'Challa alive. In fact, Everyone knows that this movie is about the people of Wakanda moving forward without King T'Challa and instead having Princess Shuri and Queen Ramonda continue reigning over the people of Wakanda. Now, this story is more or less similar, if not, I, if not just slightly different, than the first Black Panther movie. And you don't have Chadwick Boseman, and you don't have Michael B. Jordan in this movie in present. Now, ultimately, the story itself was actually pretty unique. I mean, it was based on the Marvel comics. Ryan Coogler did a great job writing an original story and then directing this follow-up. And the action sequences were all amazing. And now I can finally get to the spoilers. The first three minutes of the movie was a very big and emotional opening sequence with them passing on King T'Challa in a full tomb and doing a whole ritual and a mourning ceremony and the emotions from Lydia Wright, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Lupita Nyong'o, Dania Guerrero, I know I'm pronouncing these wrong, my apologies, and Angela Bassett's Queen Ramonda. All of them exemplified fantastic pure emotion, and it did Chadwick Boseman justice. And heck, even the opening Marvel Studios logo, similar to how they did Stan Lee in all his different roles throughout the MCU for Captain Marvel in 2019, they did the exact same thing with Chadwick Boseman with his brief appearances in Captain America Civil War, Black Panther, Infinity War, Endgame, and even just a little bit of the opening sequence in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. At the conclusion of that MCU intro, we actually got an applause from the theater. I went to see this movie at the City Walk IMAX screen in Universal City in Los Angeles. That's not normally a theater I go to, but given that it was my birthday when I saw that on November 12th, I kind of had to go all out for the IMAX. And I did see it in IMAX 3D to like get an idea of like what the 3D was going to be like. But to be fair, I also chose IMAX 3D because I heard that they were going to show the new Avatar trailer at the beginning before the movie started. And not only was that correct, but I also finally got to see the Super Mario Brothers movie trailer on the, big, on the biggest screen around. So that was a nice little treat. Back to the movie itself. I will admit... The movie, after the first three, like, even the first half hour, like, as they were, like, getting the story going on, and Shuri and Nakia and Ramonda and the other characters were all, like, progressing forward, I have to admit, the villain of this movie was essentially the water tribe that was, like, a comparatively lost tribe of Wakanda that I believe that it was Talokan. The Talokan tribe. The Talokans? I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, the Talokans essentially want vibranium for themselves as well because they feel like Wakanda has held it for too long. They have the same 
problem that the rest of the United Nations have, which that's what the first, like, five minutes of the movie covers, that the United Nations wants access to Vibranium, but Wakanda keeps refusing. And Queen Ramona makes it clear with a very emotional opening statement that they're not scared of what Vibranium, of what their Vibranium can do for all the other countries. They're scared of what all the countries will do with access to Vibranium. And that is a very smart political move by this fictitious country. Now, I will admit, there were, the whole second act of the movie was essentially an abduction of Shuri and Wakandan efforts to retrieve her, but also avoid civil war, which essentially, that's what the third act was. A civil war between the Wakandans and the Talakans. And again, the reason why I bring up the Talakans, not only are they critical to the entire plot, but also they look very eerily similar to a combination of both the Wakandan tribe and their amazing costume design and like the performances, similar to the Navi from Avatar. Now, I didn't make this joke when the movie was like happening in front of me, but after talking with some other patrons when we were all grabbing drinks at the MacGuffin bar at City Walk afterwards, yeah, people were starting to make that little emotional, that little connection, simply because of the blue skin on the Talicans, since they are the water tribe. And again, if it wasn't blue-skinned tribal people, and it wasn't connected to underwater, I would not have bothered to make any reference at all. It could have been green, it could have been green, and I probably would have made a, made a Gamora joke anywhere anywhere in there. But anyways, basically, the big reason to see this movie is see what tribute they make to Chadwick Boseman, and the tribute did them justice. Now, I will admit, here is the big spoiler, at like seven minutes into this review, that's unedited, here we go. Three, two, one. Michael B. Jordan actually makes a little two-minute cameo when Shuri decides to replicate the vibranium, like, herbal, ener like, the herbal energy to consume via liquid, and she thought that she was gonna wake up in, like, the pa in, like, the morning, like, in the, in the, the afterlife, and I was actually expecting them to maybe do, like, you know, Chadwick Boseman for, like, a very brief moment, and maybe recast Chadwick Boseman as King T'Challa, with someone else for like a brief 30 seconds or 60 seconds long and it just becomes too much for Shuri to bear to like see her brother in person. But no, they actually went with a completely different approach and brought back Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger who basically scoffed at the idea of like, were you expecting to see like people, were you expecting to see King T'Challa and the others from, and the ancestry from their bloodline? And it was a nice little reminder that not everyone is going to be like the same type of Black Panther. And I loved that message that they sent. Again, it was only for two minutes, but I will admit, I actually I actually applauded when Michael B. Jordan showed up and it was a brand new scene that was hidden from all the trailers and rightfully so. And then the ending, essentially, we have a new era for the Black Panther. And the post credit scene, Again, huge spoilers here. The post credit scene brings back King T'Challa's son. That's right. King T'Challa now has a son. And Shuri is now an aunt. Like, what an amazing way to prepare us for Black Panther 3 if they decide to actually make a Black Panther 3 within the next, like, three or four years or so. There's a lot of other MCU titles that are coming out over the next, like, year and a half, including but not limited to Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, and there's also, um, um, Avengers, and then there's Deadpool coming out in, like, 2024, I believe. But again, like, I'm still in the MCU fatigue, like many other, like, diehard moviegoers. I go and see these movies because I want to judge them fairly. And even if the review is very brief and kind of, like, ad-libbed, still, these movies represent entertainment in our culture. And 
Black Panther is definitely going to break some records. It's definitely going to gross a lot of money. It will, I will not be surprised if this movie cracks a billion dollars by Thanksgiving. It's November 13th at the time of this recording, and it's already made $150 million worldwide at the time. And I think that by the time this domestic weekend ends, the domestic box office will easily alone be in $100 million or more. Like, I might even go as far as to say $150 million or more. But again, it's not... It's a holiday weekend because it is Veterans Day on Friday, but it's not like Thanksgiving week. And Thanksgiving week, it doesn't have any serious competition aside from, you know, the movie I covered in the very first one of these, <laughs> The Fablemans. But also, with that said, thank you so much for watching this review. For the moment, the next movie is the one I was teasing the previous review, She Said. I'm looking forward to that big time. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't come upon this video by random. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.